Today, I'll talk to you about the other U.S. epidemic. Do you know what it is? It's been going on for many decades. And why is it still here? You don't hear about it in the news unless it happens to someone famous. What am I talking about? Heart attack. In my first video, I introduced myself and presented my credentials and experiences as a preventive cardiologist and cholesterol specialist. In this video, my second video, I want to talk to you about how a simple, quick, and widely available CAT scan can make a big difference in your life. It's CAT scan of the heart. It can determine whether or not you have cholesterol plaque buildup in your coronary arteries earlier. Years earlier before you actually have a heart attack or drop dead or before you need to have a stent or heart bypass. Stick around at the end because I'll show you selected video clips from an important documentary called The Widowmaker. I want to give a shout out to Irish entrepreneur David Bobbitt who spent his own money to produce this film. This film introduced coronary calcium scoring to the public and even health professionals. This technology helped him, possibly even saving his life. It may do the same for you or someone in your family. This is Dr. Jigoma, your internet Dr. Heart MD. I'm launching a campaign and I'm calling it Save Your Heart Campaign. It is the main purpose of this channel. It will be informative and hopefully occasionally entertaining. Saving hearts has been my job for the last 40 years, and I take it seriously. Every day, several jumbo jet loads of Americans crash to their death that for the last 20 years has been considered largely preventable. Just look at these numbers. 356,000 out of hospital cardiac arrest with only 10% survival. 605,000 new heart attacks, coronary calcium scoring can reduce these numbers significantly. Heart attack is the number one killer of adult Americans, killing one person every 36 seconds. It kills twice as many Americans in one year than the Second World War killed in four years. After a few decades of decline, heart disease still killed 655,000 in 2019. And alarmingly, it is on the rise again since 2010. The total economic toll is huge, $450 billion a year and growing. In my first video, I mentioned that my practice developed care innovations that help treat most patients successfully. My preventive cardiology, clinical lipidology practice created a strong line of defense and made that wall as strong as possible. We identified all high-risk patients and optimized their medical treatment to make sure they stay behind this wall. We prevented the first heart attack, and for those who already suffered a heart attack, stopped the cycle of recurring events. This is what's waiting on the other side of that wall. Heart attack, stroke, sudden death, stent, bypass, and the other specialist needed to provide the more expensive care. The cost is many times higher than preventing them in the first place. But in reality, there are more powerful and more important players. Medicare, private insurance, including HMOs, hospitals, device manufacturer, and big pharma. There is a big imbalance in this picture. Only preventive cardiologists are on the left side and the rest are on the other side. Why is that? In 2015, Dr. Kim Williams, the president of the American College of Cardiology, made this statement. It is time to turn off the faucet instead of just mopping the floor. That is a loaded statement. What kind of faucet is Dr. Williams talking about? Let's look closely at this faucet. There is one control valve and there are two spouts, money flowing from one and flowing heart attack patients from the other. 
They are tied up together because of the way insurance companies, including Medicare, reimburse hospitals and physicians. That model of reimbursement may be fine before highly effective cardiovascular disease prevention is a reality, but now that it is, this method of reimbursement in cardiology is out of step. Without widespread aggressive prevention in high-risk patients like it is now, this is what healthcare looks like. That strong wall of defense against cardiovascular events does not exist. Let's bring in the faucet. The faucet is wide open. It's spilling out with patients having cardiovascular events and also spilling out healthcare dollars. As you notice, all the healthcare dollars are flowing into just one side. There's nothing on prevention. There is no reimbursement for prevention. Clearly, this is a dysfunctional healthcare system. It does not work. Wait, maybe it works, but it only works for the insurance companies and for hospitals, but not for patients or the country. Exactly how many Americans are we talking about? How many first heart attacks every year? That's 600,000. All of them have significant plaque buildup that can't be detected by symptoms because they have none by EKG or by stress tests. But there is hope. A simple and a quick CAT scan can. There's no IV contrast, so you don't have to have an IV started. There's no exercise involved. There's minimal radiation. And the only thing you have to do is hold your breath for about 15 seconds. It is quick. The whole test takes maybe less than 15 minutes. And there's no referral required. It is inexpensive considering the amount of technology involved, costing about 80 to $100. Consider it mammography for the heart, but insurance won't pay for it. Medicare and insurance companies will pay $30,000 for a stent and maybe even $100,000 for a heart bypass, but not for a $100 test that can make bypass and stent avoidable. The cardiovascular sector of the healthcare economy is clearly dysfunctional and ripe for disruption, innovative disruption. Without coronary calcium scoring, which is what this technology is called, the way to assess risk for heart attack, stroke, and sudden death is a checklist of risk factors. And then a probability equation takes over and tells the doctor if you're at high risk. I call this approach cardiac palmistry. It's palm reading. Can you imagine, rather than having a mammography, a 55-year-old woman is asked a set of risk factors for breast cancer and say to her, you're fine. You don't need mammography. Don't worry. That is just not acceptable, right? One of those 600,000 Americans who suffered first heart attack last year was John, at age 55. Here's an inside look of what John's coronary arteries might have looked like years before the heart attack. But John had no symptoms until that day. His EKG was normal, and his $10,000 nuclear stress test was also normal. That is a common scenario. So, why did John have a heart attack? Without any warning, one of John's plaques ruptured suddenly. The plaque rupture triggered the formation of a clot which completely obstructed the artery. That's a heart attack. If John had a CAT scan of the coronary arteries for coronary calcium scoring a year before, it might look like this. There are three major arteries and the black markers represent areas of calcification within the plaques. His coronary calcium score was very high. 1,075. John could have received a comprehensive medical treatment that could have prevented a heart attack. In about one out of four, it's sudden death. You're probably asking why won't insurance pay for this test? What did it cost John? John was lucky. He could have just dropped dead like the over 200,000 Americans do every year. John sustained permanent heart damage his heart was left slightly weak. John had a stent, 
and was in the hospital for about a week. Hospital charges, $100,000. John was not able to work for one month. John needs six new medications, but John can avoid a second heart attack for the rest of his life if he adheres to the right medical treatment. This treatment can stop coronary plaque progression, stop new plaque formation, prevent plaque rupture, and even induce plaque regression. Coronary calcium scoring earlier and the medical treatment that followed could have prevented what happened to John. A $100 test saved $100,000 of medical expenses. So know your score. You're probably asking why won't insurance pay for this test? Watch this video clips from the Widowmaker and you'll find out. have any coronary disease. You could have none of the risk factors and have coronary disease. But if you have a coronary scan and you see calcium, you know you have disease. It's not a risk factor. It is looking at the disease, part of the disease process. We could have gotten there in a perfect world. We could have gotten there in three to five years. We'd all gotten behind it in the, in the beginning. Well, and so what? Well, how many lives do you think would have been saved if we'd done it in 1990, um, what we're doing now in 2013? And the answer is? A lot. In the 30 years since coronary artery scanning was invented, over 4 million people have died without any warning. That's the equivalent of half the population of New York City dropping dead. And most of these people could have been saved. We contact the big insurance companies, Kaiser and the rest, to find out why they will still pay for a $50,000 stent, but not unless you're very lucky, a hundred buck test. But they won't talk. Then one man is brave enough to break the wall of silence. He's been the public face of two of the big five as their media spokesman. I was a journalist, uh, a newspaper reporter for, for some time, but then I got into public relations work and I, I uh, realized toward the end of my career that something had happened to what I was doing for a living and uh, I was, it just dawned on me that in many cases I was doing the exact opposite of what I was trying to do as a journalist, which was to try to find truth and as best I could report it to do that. It sounds kind of trite, but I did look in the mirror and, and, and say, what happened to you? How did this happen to you? The system is not set up to reward prevention. The system is set up so that doctors are, are well compensated uh, for treating conditions. Uh, so are pharmaceutical companies. We mainly have a disease industry in this country. Uh, we've got a healthcare system that's out of control, spending an incredible amount of our national wealth, not making people better, We've, we are, we've developed a system that's based upon putting out the fires, uh, you know, taking people in, with chronic diseases and doing all these things to them. There is just not nearly enough attention paid to trying to uh, help keep people from getting sick, from getting congestive heart failure, from getting the kinds of... Uh, of, of illnesses that require stents and being put on maintenance drugs and, and having expensive care for the rest of their lives. They don't want them to die, but they don't necessarily want them to, uh, uh, to, get, to get better. If we want to end heart disease as we know it, we need to disrupt the current cardiovascular healthcare system because it's not geared to end it. American determination created a vaccine in less than one year, we can use the same American ingenuity to end the heart attack epidemic. Over 300,000 have already lost their lives to COVID-19 in less than a year. Does that steer something inside you to do something important for others? Let us create a movement, something good, something needed, something that we didn't have the courage to do before this pandemic. I'm launching Save Your Heart campaign. I am but one person, but I'm not alone. I have what I call force multipliers, and that's you who subscribe and support this channel. 
if we really want to turn up the faucet instead of just mopping the floor. The first step is for Medicare and private insurance companies to cover coronary calcium scoring just like they do for preventive mammography and colonoscopy. It is a $100 investment, not an expense. Let us save more lives from heart attack. I want to hear your suggestion. If you are a healthcare MBA, a policymaker, a disruptive entrepreneur, let's come up with a plan. Four years from now, we can look back and say we started a movement in the dark days of the pandemic and it made healthcare better. If you find value in this video, please give us your support. Subscribe, give us a like, and hit the icon button. My next video is about my COVID vaccine. Another important topic. What? You're not getting your vaccine? Why not? Okay, I'll see you next week.